me in your heart for a while Shine Sons and daughters, Family. like a photograph, Family. baptized in the water, Family. put me on the map. When you're doing simple things around the house Maybe you'll think of me and smile You know I'm tied to you Like the buttons on your blouse Keep me in your heart for a while Hold me in your thoughts Take me to your dreams Touch me as I'm falling Headed north to Pleasant Street Keep me in your heart for a while These wheels keep turning But they're running out of steam Keep me in your heart for a while Please stand if you are able sha la 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 Keep me in your heart for a while Keep me in your heart for a while
Dying, Christ destroyed our death. Rising, Christ restored our life. Christ will come again in glory. As in baptism, Vernon Jacob Lebeau Jr. put on Christ. And so in Christ may Vern be clothed with glory. Here and now, dear friends, we are God's children. What we shall be has not yet been revealed. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Those who have hope, this hope will purify themselves, as in Christ is pure. So friends, today we are gathered here to praise God and to witness to our faith and celebrate the life, a well-lived life of Vern LeBeau. We come together in grief, acknowledging our human loss. May God grant us grace that in pain we may find comfort, in sorrow hope, and in death resurrection. You may be seated. At this time, I'd like to invite Ryan Mundell up, please, to the mic. Ryan is the nephew of Don on Vern LeBeau. He will be opening our worship service with an a cappella version of Amazing Grace. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound. That saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found. Was blind, but now I see. Was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear, the hour I first believed. Through many dangers, toils, and snares, I have already come. Tis grace has brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me home. The Lord has promised good to me, His word my hope secures. He will my shield and portion be as long as life endures. Yes, when this flesh and heart shall fail and mortal life shall cease, amazing grace shall then prevail. In heaven, joy and peace. Beautiful tribute, Ryan. Thank you. Please join me in prayer. Holy and awesome God, we come to you today with heavy hearts as we mourn the loss of one that we have loved so much. We ask, Lord, that you would be present with us in our time of grief and sorrow, and that you would be with all who mourn with us this day. Comfort our pain, 
Encourage our hearts and help us to believe in the promises and the hope of your grace and resurrection. We acknowledge all that you have given us is yours. As first you gave Vern to us, so now we give Vern back to you. Receive Vern into your arms of your mercy. Raise Vern up with all your people. Receive us also and raise us into new life. At this time, the family has chosen four particular scripture verses to be read by family members and friends of the family. Um, Austin Enquist, if you would come up, please. Austin is the grandson of Vern and Donna LeBeau. James, or J.T. LeBeau, he is the nephew and grand, or godson of Donna and Vern. Liz Carpentier will be doing a reading. She is their, ner their niece, excuse me, their niece. And Melissa Ann LeBeau will also be reading, and she is also a niece to Donna and Vern. All right, buddy, you ready? Come out here. Lord my God, I cried out to you for help, and you healed me. Psalm 30, verse 2. Amen. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. John 3.16 For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. Uh, he refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right path for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Thank you. Some call this a funeral service. We like to call it a celebration of life, a, wife, a life well lived. And I'm sure as you are here and you will be talking to others and you'll be hearing stories being shared uh, by the two family members that have been appointed by the family, you will think of your own stories. We'd like to invite you two ways to express those since we don't have time for everyone to come forward and share a Vernism or a story of some kind. Right? So please take the time. There are pens in the pockets of the chairs um, around you that you can write in those pieces of paper that you have inside your bulletins. Just a memory or a vernism of some kind, and there's a box in the lobby that will collect those afterwards from you. Likewise, when we have the luncheon afterwards, or, or just from the, the hours and days and years ahead, that as you are together spending time, that you remember to share these stories about Vern, and keep his, love, his memory, his love alive, his legacy alive, if you will. But for the purposes of today's service, I'd like to invite Jeremy LeBeau to come up. Jeremy is going to be our first uh, person to give expressions of love and remembrance of Uncle Vern. Thank you, Deb. This is a tribute to you, Uncle Vern. Vernon Jacob LeBeau Jr., husband, father, grandfather, brother, uncle, friend, Dr. Vern, <laughs> and of course, the Vern dog. You are certainly one of a kind. And as we all know, Vern loved a variety of things from 
working, cooking, fishing, hunting, snowmobiling, trucking, traveling. He always seemed to figure out how to find the best gear for whatever he was doing. It didn't matter what he, what he was up to. But more important than that, all the things that he did enjoy, he did doing that, he did enjoy with people. And Vern always put his family first, no matter what. Sometimes working several jobs at a time to support the family so they could do the things that they loved. He loved his wife Donna so much and was willing to do, it, do anything for the Duchess, he called her. <laughs> Married to the love of his life for almost 46 years, he wouldn't have gave that up for the world. And he was proud of his kids. He loved his daughter Michelle, or Queenie, he would call her. What Queenie wants, Queenie gets. <laughs> and his son Tim, Goob. <laughs> he was always highly supportive and involved in their lives. From Michelle's dance to Tim's sports, Vern was always there with the love and support. Maybe even cheerleading a bit too much at the hockey games. Teaching life's lessons to them along the way, hard work, loyalty, toughness, and love. Vern enjoyed spending time with his grandkids and their families, cooking, camping, fishing, watching their sporting events, or just hanging out. I think the grandkids had plenty of learn with Vern sessions. But, but the thing that I will always remember most about my Uncle Vernie is his servant, his servant mentality and his big heart. That was, that was the cornerstone of his being. He would always say yes if you asked him. From building the concession stand at the Farmington Ice Arena, helping family and friends with their various projects or, move, or moves, or trucking a load of furniture down to Arizona, you could always count on Vern. Vern always put others ahead of himself, and he loved doing it. I think we should all try to be a little bit more like Vern. You now, being his favorite nephew, I mean, I'll claim that, but being his favorite nephew, <laughs> I'll never forget the adventures I had with Vern. From him letting me drive his semi when I was a little kid, or thinking I was driving the semi when I was to the crazy family RV trip to New York, to the snowmobile trips to Colorado, and the camping trips, all bring back fond memories of Uncle Vern. I'll never forget the time a big group of us went to Colorado snowmobiling. And we were all new to riding in the mountains, a little bit different than riding here in, uh, in Minnesota. But we get out there and I see Vern, we're at the base of the mountain and he just shoots right up a mountain called Super Chicken and gets just about to the top of it. And all of a sudden the snowmobile stops and the snowmobile comes back down without Vern on it. <laughs> and the, th the snowmobile starts going end over end and then doing barrel rolls, parts are flying off of it everywhere. And then all of a sudden I see this little speck and it's Vern sliding down on his butt grabbing things, sliding down the hill, grabbing the parts and picking them up as he goes and he gets, finally the snowmobile comes to a rest at the base of the hill and it lands upright and we're sitting there thinking this snowmobile is done for, it's trash, right? But resourceful Vern comes running up with all the parts in his hands and we, we end up snapping it all back together and off we went and we didn't have to tell the rental company a thing. <laughs> <laughs> And I know that everybody here thinks that Vern was touted himself as the, the, probably the best driver in the world. And he would always tell, he'd always tell me, and I think he always told everybody else, that he had more miles in reverse than he had going forward. Uh, well, I remember a, a day a few years back when Vern worked in the warehouse at uh, IBS for me, driving forklift. I was up in my office just working away. I heard this loud dong, and then the whole building starts shaking. Thinking we're in it when an earthquake or something, I run down out of my office, down to the warehouse floor, and there's Vern on the forklift, 
kind of looking at me, sit a little stunned, you know. And I go, Vern, are you, are you okay? And he goes, yeah, yeah, I'm okay. I said, did you, did you hit that support post with the forklift? Well, yeah. <laughs> Who the hell put that there anyway? <laughs> we never talked about that again. <laughs> but probably, probably the funniest story I have about Vern is just random. Him and I, one day I was driving by their house, and this is when they lived, uh, Vern and Donna lived in the twin home in Farmington, and I uh, just randomly popped in. I saw Vern's truck, so I go up to the door, and uh, I ring the doorbell, and nobody answers the door. I wait for a couple more minutes, and I finally I look in the window, and I see, I see arms and legs just pumping away on a treadmill like this. And then I knock on the door louder, and I yell, Vern! So finally, I see Vern come to the door. He opens the door, and Vern's standing there in front of me, sweats just rolling off his head. He's got a headband on, tidy whitey underwear, <laughs> shoot socks, and running shoes. <laughs> and he goes, hi, hi, how you doing? I go, well, I'm doing pretty good. <laughs> how, how are you doing, Vern? Well, oh, oh, good, good. I'm, I'm just trying to get a workout in here, he says. <laughs> I see that. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, he goes, uh, well, I'm just about ready to wrap up. He goes, you want to come in for a sauna and, and huff some eucalyptus with me down? <laughs> I, I, couldn't stop la I couldn't stop laughing. It was just cl classic Vern, and what you see is what you get. <laughs> <sighs> Thank you for the memories, Uncle Vern. Our lives will never be the same without you. Oh. Recently, before Vern passed, we were asked to write down one word that best describes Vern. And after thinking about it for a bit, I wrote down the word strong. And we all know Vern was a strong guy, but that just seemed too obvious for Vern. And after Vern passed away and the bitter reality of Vern not being with us started to hit me a bit, I had to change my word to irreplaceable. Webster's Dictionary defines irreplaceable as incapable of being replaced, totally unique, imp impl impossible to replace if lost or damaged. Well, Uncle Vern, you are most certainly irreplaceable. And we want you back so bad. We do. We want you back here with us today. But you left us with, the, with all the memories and stories that will live on for generations to come. Years from now, people will be talking about the legend of the Vern Dog. And if Vern were here today, I think the first thing he would have said about all of, of what I just said, well, isn't that just a bunch of happy horse shit? <laughs> <laughs> But in all seriousness, I think he would want us to know that even though his time here wasn't as long as we all wanted, he filled those days with as much as a person could, showing up as a husband, a father, grandfather, a brother, an uncle, and a friend. Working hard and packing his life full of adventures and experiences, oh. Excuse me, I gave her the berries, he would say, or I rolled the bull. A true fighter, always displaying the best attitude, no matter what circumstances, he fought this terrible disease to the very end, proving all the experts wrong, hanging on as long as he did. Oh, I think it's fitting that he passed away on 9-11, a day in which we remember our heroes. Because, Vern, you will always be our hero. I think we all know Vern liked to speak his mind from time to time and had, had plenty of quotable quotes over the years. But some of the last things that he said to me were the most profound. <laughs> Sitting with him in his last days in the basement, he said, don't worry. So he was still trying to give comfort to us, even in his last days, trying to make us feel good. 
He said, Jesus is in my heart. And you need to be happy. And to always find the good, no matter what the situation. Well said, Vern. Well said. Well, Vern, I can see you smiling down on us today with that trademark grin from ear to ear. Wearing your cowboy hat, your cowboy boots, and perhaps some tidy whities <laughs> We all love you, Vern. Thank you for all that you have done, all the life lessons that you have taught us in your own special way. The world will never be the same. Your life was definitely a full ride. Thank you. Hey, uh, Chad on the tech team, can we delete certain things um, for our YouTube so we don't get a delete? Nope, it's out uh, it's there. It's out there, okay. <laughs> they even asked for permission ahead of time. They're so polite. So, um, thank you, Jeremy. I'd like to invite Bob Mundahl to come up now, please. Um, Bob is Donna's brother, Vern's brother-in-law, and he would like to share a few words also. Good morning, Donna, Michelle, and John. Tim and Becky, Evan, Owen, Austin, Grace, and Benny. I'm so sorry. Vern loved you guys very much. For many years, Vern expressed his wishes for the afterlife. He said, and I quote, Yep, you get me one of those taxidermies. You have me stuffed. Prop me up in the entryway where you can see me every day. Because you're going to miss me when I'm gone. <laughs> Thank you all for being here to honor Vern today and his sense of humor. I'm Bob Mundell. I was Vern's brother-in-law. And he was my friend. I first met Vern <clears throat> in the early 70s when my sister brought him home as a possible prospect. <laughs> I was happy to have him around. He was a really fun guy, much, so, much more so than my sister. <laughs> Even as a young man, this baby-faced Vern was a big character. And 40-some years later, I find myself here attempting to tell the story of this larger-than-life individual. My family was fortunate enough to have spent a great deal of time with Vern and Donna. I believe I've spent more time with Vern outside of my own immediate family than anyone I can think of. And the more time we spent together, the more his character grew and the more knowledge he gathered. But more on that a little later. Vern was most importantly a devoted man. He was devoted to the love of his life, his wife Donna, who he would do anything for including giving regular foot massages, whether after work or a long, long shopping spree. <laughs> he was equally devoted to his children, Michelle and Tim, from the moment they were born and in every aspect of their lives. Then came the grandchildren, whom he cherished. He loved the title Grandpa and he lit up each time he spoke of his grandchildren. He even planted five trees 
white pines recently at the back of Tim and Becky's yard, one for each grandchild. Vern approached his siblings, his in-laws, and his friends in much the same way, with great care and loyalty. Clearly, Vern loved people. He would do anything for anyone at any time. If you asked him for help, no matter how small or how big the job, he was not only willing, but eager to help. The only two questions he ever asked were when and where. To say he could be counted on is an understatement. He worked hard and he provided the entertainment. As far as the Mundells and Vern were concerned, well, he was a big part of our family. He fit right in. At first I was worried. Our family was loud and large. But I quickly learned too that Vern too came from loud and large. <laughs> Vern's mother-in-law June and father-in-law Pete approved of Vern and knew he was a very good man. Vern and June loved to talk and they loved to laugh together. He thought a lot of his mother-in-law. And for Donna, that was particularly important. Here's why. Vern on marriage. If you think you like the daughter, you better check out the mother. Because that's what you're going to get. You don't like the mother? I don't care what you think about the daughter. You better get your ass out of there. <laughs> How lucky we are that Vern chose Donna and Donna chose Vern. Spending time with Vern, as we all know, was always an experience. My wife, Julie, our kids, and I spent many vacations with Vern and Donna and Tim and Michelle, and sometimes the Lobos. Whether at Kenny's cabin or adult camping, those trips were my, some of my favorites and memorable thanks to Vern enlightening, enlightening us with his wisdom. You see, if you don't know, Vern knew a lot, about a lot. His quips were many and came to be known as Vernisms. I shared a couple already today, but the problem we discovered was he had so many. We realized how important it would be to have a permanent record of the knowledge that he had gifted us. Hence, the Book of Vern was created. <laughs> this book has yet to be published, although I believe it could be. Here are a couple of additional insights from the book. Vern on his brain. I don't know what jar they got Einstein's brain in, but I'll tell you what, mine could sit right alongside it. <laughs> and of course, Vern on the book of Vern. I'll tell you what, I'll be quoting me a lot more often now that I know someone's interested. It wasn't just the quotes that made us all aware of his expertise. It was his diverse experience in so many areas. The list never stopped growing, in part thanks to cable TV. And included such titles as pharmacist, food critic, cowboy, chef, general contractor, fishing pro, pastry chef, sommelier, golf instructor, dietitian, teacher to all, airline pilot, 
the bearer of the eternal flame, and surgeon. Well, first cayenne pepper, then eucalyptus, but if neither worked, surgery. <laughs> During this past week, I collected some adjectives describing Vern from friends and family. To name a few, Vern was faithful, he was funny, he was badass, determined, courageous, incomparable. There were those two who just couldn't fit Vern into one word. They said he was perfectly imperfect and a crazy, wonderful, beautiful human being. When Vern was diagnosed in 2020, he was determined to push back, ride the bull. Donna, you took such good care of him, and he knew it. Vern needed to take care of some things too, spend time with his family, enjoy some fishing, maybe get Donna that new car, and possibly buy a new Harley because he thought he'd look damn good on it. <laughs> on Saturday, September 11th, Vern passed away. Just two days shy of, <clears throat> excuse me, his and Donna's 46th wedding anniversary. On Monday, September 13th, a vase full of roses and an anniversary card and signed by Vern, arrived at Donna's home. He had taken care of everything. Vern's attitude through his last days was no different than any other day. Give it all you got. Though I've tried, it's impossible to fully capture a person as well lived and as well loved as Vern. My words today are not his full story, but I hope they fully represent his essence, his richness, and his character. Lastly, I'd like to share a writing with you titled Fisherman's Prayer. I pray that I may live to fish until my dying day. And when it comes to my last cast, I then most humbly pray, when in the Lord's great landing net and peacefully asleep, that in his mercy I be judged, big enough to keep. Thank you. Thank you again, Jeremy and Bob. And as I mentioned, um, you all, I'm sure, have stories of your own. So please continue to share those stories. And if you have a minute to write those down for the collection box uh, that we'll gather in the lobby, please take the time to do so. Next, we're going to watch a video that the family um, had, uh, had chosen. I'm going to give you just a little bit of background on this particular one. It's a new song by a group called Casting Crowns. It's a Christian musical group. And um, the song is to comfort those who have lost loved ones, especially during COVID-19. So it's a very recent song. Those grappling with feelings of emptiness and loneliness after the passing of, the, of a loved one and who have hope that they are in heaven now. Amid their grief, they have that assurance that they're not suffering anymore. Vern did not pass away from COVID-19. Cancer took him. But this is assurance for us folks to know that he is no longer suffering, right? And that we do have the hope of seeing him in heaven someday. Let's watch together the video. Those of you that are watching online, because of copyright reasons, we will not be able to show the video, but you'll be able to see the words and hear the music.
If I had only known the last time would be the last time I would have put off all the things I had to do I would have stayed a little longer Held on a little tighter Now what I'd give for one more day with you Cause there's a wound here in my heart where something's missing And they tell me that it's gonna heal with time But I know you're in a place where all your wounds have been erased And knowing yours are healed is healing mine The only scars in heaven It won't be long to me and you There'll be no such thing as broken And all the old will be made new And the thought that makes me smile now Even as the tears fall down Is that the only scars in heaven Or on the hands that hold you now I know the road you walked was anything but easy You picked up your share of scars along the way oh, But now you're standing in the sun You fought your fight and your race is run The pain is all a million miles away The only scars in heaven that won't belong to me and you. There'll be no such thing as broken. And all the old will be made new. And the thought that makes me smile now, even as the tears fall down. The only scars in heaven yeah, are on the hands that hold you now. Not a day goes by that I don't see you You live on in all the better parts of me Until I'm standing with you in the sun I'll fight this fight and this race I'll run Until I finally see what you can see Oh, the only scars in hell Won't belong to me and you There'll be no such thing as broken And all the old will be made new And the thought that makes me smile now And even as the tears fall down Is that the only scars in heaven the hands that hold you now beautiful we have another song chosen by the family that is a beautiful song by Vince Gill and it's called Go Rest Time and Emily Hansen will perform that for us now I know your life on earth was true, and 
met Vern in the sanctuary about 14 years ago, thanks to Tim and Missy. <laughs> Congratulations on 14 years of marriage, by the way. Where are you guys at? I can't see you. Congratulations on 14 years of marriage. And I remember going to the groom's dinner out at Tommy's house and Clean's house, and Kenny was there, and... and uh, he was cooking something in the tent somewhere, doing something, and Jeff was there, and he was fixing up stuff, I think, for some stuff, and I just small talking with Kenny, and I said, so both your brothers cook? He goes, yeah, a little. <laughs> he goes, but I'm by far the best chef in the family. <laughs> That's the first time I had a conversation with him that uh, I could tell he liked his brothers a lot, as much as he teased them. And then like uh, Jeremy, I had an opportunity to go visit Kenny. He was a member of our church. He went to a good Lutheran church down the road, he told me. He didn't need did this crossroads place. But he had shoulder surgery, and Tim, his son, said, well, you know, maybe you should go visit my dad. He's kind of home by himself, and Donna's working a lot. So I, I went on over there, and like Jeremy mentioned, I got to see, <laughs> see Vern meet me at the door in his tidy whiteies. <laughs> Come on in, get yourself a Coke. <laughs> Big scar on his shoulder, no shirt on, no nothing. <laughs> I thought, well, maybe put a shirt on since I came over. Nope, nope, not, not at all. When I asked Deb to go visit with me over at, at uh, the house, maybe was first I said, maybe I should go in first before <laughs> you come on in. Just to, before we go pray for him, make sure he's uh, properly dressed. Um, I love Vern. And many of you in this room love Vern too. And when Bob put that thing about what word do you want to share, there's so many words I wanted to share. One that came to my mind was the word faithfulness. 
faithfulness. He's faithful to his family. He's faithful to his friends. And his faithfulness to Jesus. We know that he was faithful to you, Donna, 46 years and got those flowers in, got the last word just like he wanted to, right? Faithful to going to all your sporting events and dance events and all the things you did growing up. Both Michelle and Tim, he was always either your biggest supporter or worst supporter, I don't know what you want to call it, but he was there always. Same with the grandkids now. It's there for you as well. He's faithful in terms of spending time with the family, vacations. It was all said already. I don't need to repeat it. But you know that he was there because he loved you. I know that if he was faithful to his friends, and I loved um, how Tim mentioned that the whole sense of servant mentality, and that's what I had written down. I want to show hands if anybody in this room has ever asked Vern for a favor. (laughs) A few hands gone up. And what did you say, Bob? It's not if you'd say yes, it's like where and when, right? Where and when. Fourth through the airport, no problem. <laughs> Which airport? Airport one or airport terminal one or terminal two, right? And his faithfulness was so apparent in just everything he did. He trusted everyone. Even sometimes when they didn't deserve to be trusted. Tom told me a story that um, when they were in Chicago once they were doing some trucking and and I think if I forget the story, right, Tom? Is a Johnny G23 CB radio, is that right? Fairly expensive radio at the time when it got back in the days when CBs were the only way you could communicate. And of course, Vern wanted to get a good one, and so he saw this guy probably about three in the morning, gave him cash. He said, Can you go find me one? Oh, I'll be right back with it. <laughs> have, have you seen it yet, Tom? Not so far. He hasn't come back with it yet, right? <laughs> That's because Vern would do that. He just trusted everyone. If you're sitting here today, you know he trusted you. I love that word, irreplaceable. Irreplaceable, Jeremy, that's a great word. And he was indeed irreplaceable. And I love the the way that he wanted to go out. He he was pretty apparent, besides being stuffed and put in the corner, he did have a few other requests too. He wanted to have his, his hat on and his boots on, he wanted to be outside. That's exactly how he went out. His family and his friends around him, his cowboy hat on, and his boots on. His daughter Michelle shared with me a story from the song lyrics of who's going to fill his shoes. And it was a song that was playing regularly when I'd come over to visit, and we were praying with him. And the song lyrics go something like this. It's written by... Troy Seals and Max Barnes, but it's mostly famous because of George Jones singing it. And he's saying this chorus, who's going to fill their shoes? He talked about legendary singers like Johnny Cash and Merle Haggard and Hank Williams. That's a great question to ask for Vern. He is irreplaceable. But could you imagine if each and every one of you just took a little bit to fill his shoes? Some of you fill his shoes by your Vernisms. Some of you will fill his shoes by the way you cook and the way you share your food. Some of you may share his shoes by being Dr. Vern and fixing cuts and wounds and maybe causing a few. Some of you will fill his shoes because of the stories you tell and the memories you have. Maybe you'll fill your shoes when you catch that next big fish and you think of the time you went fishing with them. Who's going to fill his shoes? 1 Peter 4.10 says, Each of you should use whatever gift you've received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. Who's going to fill their shoes? Who's going to stand that tall? Who's going to play the Opry and the Wabash Cannonball? Who's going to give their heart and soul to get to me and you? Lord, I wonder when they go on, who's going to fill their shoes? So you got some big, big shoes to fill, guys and ladies. It's a share of Vern's love for family and for friends. 
but also his love for his faith in Jesus Christ. The passage that was shared from the 23rd Psalm was one that I read the, and said with um, Vern for quite some time. When I go over there, he seemed to just like that passage better than most. I'll read it one more time. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff that comfort me. I love that phrase, and I talked to Vern about that as he walked through the valley of the shadow of death. And he didn't have any fear. I think, Jeremy, you said it well when you said that he said he had Jesus in his heart. And he kept spending more and more time with him as things draw close to the end. We had some great talks. But his love for his family, his love for Jesus, his love for many of you in this room. How prepare us to table before me in the presence of my enemies. Did Vern have an enemy? I never met one. Maybe you guys have. <laughs> but the idea behind that was I asked him, I said, is there anybody that's going to be mad that you're gone? He goes, nope. <laughs> the anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I will dwell in the house of the Lord. Forever. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I went over just a, about 10 days ago, and Vern was in his basement relaxing, and Don was out running some errands. And the first thing, because I'm a pastor, I'm supposed to say this. I go, hey, Vern, do you want to pray about anything? <laughs> and he goes, well, I've already been praying all day. I don't need any more. <laughs> so, well, that's what they pay me to do, Vern. I can throw an extra one in there for you. But he's always faithful. He's faithful here at church. In fact, we have the scrape up ushers now that he's not here because we can always count on him every Sunday. He's always out in the lobby shaking hands, greeting, handing out bulletins. I remember one time it was raining out and Vern came in to me and he said, it's raining out, you got an umbrella? And I said, well, I think there's one in the back office. And I remember him standing out there in the rain with his umbrella, all those ladies coming out of the cars and he'd walk them to the door, make sure that they didn't get wet. That's just a little bit of who Vern was, that faithful steward. He just always wanted to help. I always just asked that question, when and where? At the end, he said he was going to ride the bull to the end. And if you went over to his house, you knew that was true because there were horns in the back and a rope, right? We'd go roping with the kids and the grandkids. But we talked about that riding the bull to the end, and I said, it's not the end, Vern. And I shared the passage that's on the front of your program. It says, in my house there are many rooms. If it were not so, I've gone to place before you. And we talked about what will, what will heaven be like? And Vern, as you said, was a general contractor, so he's probably building his own place right now. You know, he doesn't, nothing's good enough when he gets there. But we talked about what heaven would be like. And he said, I've already been seeing some of the people that I know went ahead of me. I thought about that. He was already beginning to have a glimpse of heaven even before he left. He was seeing those people that he was looking for. He was faithful. He was faithful to the end. Not just riding the bull, but with his love for you and his love for Jesus. May we all say that about our lives someday. That we rode the bull to the end. We did because we loved our family our friends, and our faith in Jesus. Let us pray. Holy and loving God, we thank you so much. We thank you for the love that Vern had for so many people. His heart was so big. His heart was so big. And so was his laughter. He treated people just like you said in your word, Lord, that we should treat people just as we want to be treated. And so we thank you that we were able to see that and experience that through Vern. And Lord, we just pray this day for those of us that are left behind, that are still riding the bull, that are still trying to 
Remember the love we had for him. Would you heal our hearts this day? Every sense of grieving will, will soon pass because we'll be filled with the joy of you, the joy of our memories of Vern. Pray for these things in your name. Amen. This is the part of the service that we call the naming. The naming. Vernon Jacob LeBeau Jr., known as Vern Dog, age 69 of Farmington, formerly of Burnsville, passed away peacefully on September 11th, 2021. He was surrounded by the love of his family and friends. Vernon is preceded in death by his parents, Vern and Shirley, and brother-in-law, Kenny Dahlbeck. He is survived by his beloved wife of 45, 46, 46 years, Donna Mundell. His children, Michelle and Quist, John, Tim and Becky, grandchildren, Evan, Owen, Austin Enquist, Grace, Bennett, Lebeau, his siblings, Joanne Corder, Tom, Helene, Lenny and Sally, Penny and Alicia, Sherry Dahlbeck, Jeff and Liz, sister-in-law, Patty, and many wonderful nieces, nephews, and extended family. Vern was a wonderful and loving husband father, grandfather, brother, uncle, and friend. He lived his life with adventure, with travel, and a passion for the outdoors. Your attendance here today means more to the family than you will ever know. Your friendship and love over Vern's life will never be forgotten. And a very special thank you to the DeVita girls from Northfield and Minnesota Hospice. A special thank you is sent out to all of you for your presence in this time of loss on behalf of the LeBeau family. They also wanted me to mention that you are invited to a luncheon at the end of the service. Come out the door, go left down to the hallway through the link and to the gymnasium of Christian Heritage Academy. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for the life of your servant, Vernon Jacob Lebeau, Jr., affectionately known as Vern Dog. We thank you for sharing Vern with us. And for all that Vern has taught us, for the example that Vern lived, for the faith that Vern shared, we give you thanks. Touch our broken hearts today as we mourn the loss of one we've loved so dearly. Give us the faith to believe in your promises of eternal life when we have a relationship with you. And may you encourage us with the peace that you have promised and the peace that Vern knows so well and is experiencing right now. Remind us of your presence in our time of grief. Comfort us in our loss this day. Be with us today as we pray the prayer that you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our bread, and it's our trespasses. We forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom and the power. This time we'll share in our closing hymn together, Old Rugged Cross. Would you please stand? Sing this with us, please. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love where the dearest and the best for a world of lost sinners was slain. So I cherish the old rugged cross. 
Till my trophies at last I lay down And I will cling to the old rugged cross And exchange it someday for a crown Oh, that old rugged cross So despised by the world a wondrous attraction for me for the dear Lamb of God left his glory above to bear it to dark Calvary so I cherish the old rugged cross until my trophies at last I lay down and I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown to the old rugged cross I will ever be true it's shame someday to my home far away where his glory forever I'll share so I cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down and I will cling to the Change it someday for a crown, and I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. You may be seated. This time I'd invite the family to come forward for our final blessing. A pastor or a priest wears a stole around their neck. And it was given to me, it was given to me by the Bishop of the United Methodist Church. He said, from this day forward, my life would never be the same, that I was yoked to the bride of Jesus Christ, the church. When I do weddings or when I do funerals, I do confirmation experiences, I often pull out my stole. I don't wear it typically every Sunday, for those who come here. But I'd like to bring it to these sacred events for that tangible reminder that I'm yoked to the bride of Jesus Christ, the church. And I place the stole on Vern's casket today and with the family here to remind each and every one of us here that now Vern is yoked to the bride that he is with Jesus in heaven. He's connected because he's loved so much in this world. And now he's in eternal heaven with the one who he served. Let us pray. From ashes and ashes and from dust to dust. Each of us come into this world and each of us depart. But it's not our bodies, it's our soul that is now united in heaven. We pray for Vern this day and for each of us. And we commend his spirit to you, Lord, to your love and care. May he abide with you today and for eternity until we meet him again in heaven. It's in your name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. I invite the pallbearers and the honorary pallbearers forward at this time.
the family just sit down momentarily to the pallbearers get here. On the wings of a snow-white dove He sent his pure, sweet love A sign from above On the wings of a dove When trouble surrounds us And evil comes The body grows weak The spirit grows numb these things beset us He doesn't forget us He sends down His love On the wings of a dove On the wings of a snow-white dove He sent His pure, sweet love A sign from above On the wings of a dove when Noah had drifted on the first flood late days, he searched for land in various ways. Troubles he had some, but wasn't forgotten. God sent him his love on the wings of a dove. On the wings of a snow-white dove He sent his pure, sweet love A sign from above On the wings of a dove On the wings of a snow-white dove He sent his pure, sweet love A sign from above On the wings of a dove
in the silver singing river there's beauty in the sunlight in the sky but none of these and nothing else can steal the beauty that I remember in my true love's eyes ah but only if my own true love is waiting yes and if I could hear a heart as I bleed If she were lying by me Would I rest in my bed once again Sons and daughters Like a photograph Baptized in the water Put me on the map All in this together We're taking a chance Sometimes when you're doing simple things around the house Maybe you'll think of me and smile You know I'm tied to you like the buttons on your blouse Keep me in your heart for a while Hold me in your thoughts Take me to your dreams Touch me as I'm falling Headed north to Pleasant Street Keep me in your heart for a while These wheels keep turning But they're running out of steam Keep me in your heart for a while For a while 